Welcome to the Aikido Journal podcast. This is Josh Gold, your host, and today I'm here with Roy Dean. Uh, Roy is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu expert, and he holds black belts in Aikido and judo and Japanese jiu-jitsu. He is also a very accomplished media producer, and he's worked with Aikido Journal on a number of projects. So welcome, Roy. Thanks for having me on, Josh. Of course. Pleasure to have you, as always. Um, so today, mostly, I'd like to talk about your media work, um, especially with Aikido Journal Academy. But um, before we go there, it, it, I recently discovered that you had actually done some media work for Aikido Journal a long time ago, back at the at the Aiki Expos. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Back in 2005, I was in San Diego, and Stanley Pranit had put out... Um, he had put out a, a request for videographers for the Ike Expo. So I submitted my application and, and a video I had done. I put together a little commercial from some grappling in San Diego. And he liked it, said, hey, that'd be great if, uh, if you could participate in it. And I leapt at the chance because there were so many great martial artists in that room. And I wanted to be, I wanted to be part of it. Um, and yeah, so it ended up being a great experience. It was the only Ike Expo that I attended. Um, although I've seen videos of the demonstrations, um, uh, in years past, but it was really a fantastic experience. And, um, and I was able to meet a number of notable martial artists, including Bruce Bookman, who had always been one of my heroes. So, uh, I recently interviewed Bruce Bookman sensei and, um, yeah, I found it to be very impressive. Um, and so you met him back in 2005 at the Los Angeles Ike Expo. Is that right? That's correct. And at that time, I was a, a brown belt at the time. He was a brown belt. He'd been a brown belt for a long time in BJJ. But he was one of the first people to really inspire me to um, cross-train. Of course, I had trained before Aikido. I had trained in judo. But you know, seeing that he had come from a traditional um, Aikikai background, yet made room for, to study Western boxing. Uh, he was one of the first people to uh, really champion Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and gaining, um, you know, fluency in movement on the ground. I think those were those were green lights for a young martial artist who wanted to be as good as they could be. And so in that way, he really lit the way for a whole generation um, that embraced cross training. And what were your impressions of him um, on the mat? Mm. I was, I really liked, I really liked him, and I was really impressed with his technique. But the fact that I liked him, he was very down to earth. Um, whenever you go to a tournament or any kind of exposition, or any kind of professional event, you know, there's a lot of peacocking and puffing your chest out, and I'm this, and I'm the inheritor of this rue, or whatever it happens to be. Um, ego can definitely flare, but there was none on his part, And even though he was a very, very accomplished uh, martial artist. No ego on his part. And um, I was also impressed with his students. They had a great vibe. And they seem uh, really skilled as well. And they seem to be a very positive and cohesive unit coming into the Ike Expo to share their skills. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah, his, um, the, his students are fantastic. And he's really built up a strong community at his dojo in, in Seattle. I, I feel that um, he's a great technician, but he's also a great leader and instructor. And he knows how to build a culture and he knows how to build a strong community. So um, it's pretty awesome to have him as, as part of the Aikido community. And, and what else, um, what were some of your other impressions from, from the Aikido Expo at, at that time? I know you, uh, you saw Sistema there, and I believe also your jiu-jitsu instructor was, um, was teaching at that event. Yes. So let's start with Sistema. Sistema, I had only seen in um, just on video. And I wasn't sure what the hype was all about, um, but it was really kind of, you know, becoming quite popular. And people in Aikido circles um, had been introduced to it, I believe, through Aikido Journal. I believe Aikido Journal actually 
um, kind of gave a broader platform for Sistema to gain exposure in the United States. And, you know, and I, I think that's you know, tip of the hat to Aikido Journal for being so open minded. Um, it kind of the same way that, you know, Aikido has returned the favor to Daito Do Aikido Jiu Jitsu, um, kind of bringing exposure to that art that may have otherwise gone under the radar or faded into his, the, you know, faded into history. Uh, I feel the exposure it did for Sistema and embracing uh, those flowing movements. Yet it's a very different art than Aikido. You know, it's structureless almost, as opposed to rigidly structured. Um, I thought that was that was really cool. Um, and all those Sistema guys were in camouflage, and yeah, it was that was an interesting crew to have assembled there. Um, I remember the Daito Ryu exhibition that I had seen was pretty, um, just like the videos, kind of regimented and standardized. And, you know, Bruce Bookman taught a particular takedown from the knees that I use to this day. And, um, yeah, that was, it was just a small trip, but all the right angles. And uh, I've used it quite often in, in the years since. Um, yeah, it was, it was very, it was, it was really an excellent time to be exposed to a variety of, um, Aikido styles and kind of sister art practitioners. Yeah, that's, that's right. I, since I, you know, I kind of took over the the helm at Aikido Journal, I've had the opportunity to, to talk to many senior level people in the Aikido world. And so many of them had, had met for the first time or you know, at least reconnected at the Ike Expos. And uh, it's, it was just really interesting to hear almost every conversation I've had with, you know, different different Shihans or um, very seasoned people in the Aikido world. They, you know, they almost inevitably end up referencing something about the Ike Expo. So I, I look back on that and I'm very thankful that, um, that Stan put that, put that together. So am I. So am I. Yeah. So, so let's, kind of fast forward uh about 13 years and now here we are in in 2018 and you've been helping quite a bit with um aikido journal academy projects and we we put together the bulletproofing pins project together and we've we've got two other things that are that are coming up soon we have uh with bruce bookman sensei we're going to be hosting a a live instructor seminar in may on memorial day weekend which is which is almost full, by the way, and um, and then also we're going to be doing an online course uh, with him that'll be released later later this year. So we've got that, and then we recently um, rebuilt the key Aikido course from Aikido Journal, featuring Koichi Tohei. And so maybe we can talk a little bit about your you know your experience working on these projects and uh, and the role you've played in them. Yeah. I'm, I'm- I'm happy to, um, you know, both of these projects that we've done so far have been learning experiences, particularly using, you know, choosing this new platform that we want to use, um, you know, organizing the material, what is too much material, what is pinpointed. And yeah, I've, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed the collaboration, um, you know, and kind of rediscovering in many ways, the, core movements and where they came from and kind of contextualizing those movements with this exposure that I've gotten of Aikido after stepping away from the Aikido world for so many years. Um, I was focused on BJJ for exclusively for, oh, at least a good 15 years. So to be able to come back and kind of see the art with fresh eyes makes each project pretty exciting. Um, in a way that maybe, for example, a, a straight BJJ instructional uh, does not excite me in the same way. There's there's no kind of cross pollination. There's no um, you don't have the same kind of um, insight. And yet with this with this Koichi Tohei um, course that we've done, it's really bringing in that historical context. You know. No matter what, you can go back 2,000 years, you can go back 50 years. The core movements for 
efficient biomechanics remain the same. And they're lost and they're rediscovered and they're described in different ways. But being able to have, it really, I feel it was an honor to be able to work on this project and to be able to um, have the legacy of Koichi Tohei, who I grew up reading about. Um, and I read Key in Everyday Life in, in multiple times. And to be able to work with his material, his movements, essentially score his movements, um, it was fantastic. And I think I have a better understanding of jujitsu and a better understanding of Aikido um, than I ever did before. So being able to work on this has definitely been educational. And, um, you know, and there were technical things that, that we handled as well. Yeah. So with the, the Ki Aikido course, it, it's interesting because um, Stan Prannan had created a first generation Ki Aikido course where he had edited down uh, Tohei Sensei's videos into something like 80 different video clips, each one mm-hmm. focused on a specific technique. And there, there was some music there um, and, and there was some voiceover there. Um, and they were kind of all just posted to a to a page, a web page. And um, interestingly, we since um, you know since we relaunched the Aikido Journal website, uh, I've gotten I mean a lot of communication from people. But the key Aikido course was the one you could say uh, course that people had had really requested the most, and they're like, hey. You know, I noticed that this isn't available anymore. Uh, where can I get it? Um, or when is it coming out again? And so it, it seemed like a pretty interesting project to be able to take that old course and, and do what we could to um, use new technology to bring it forward and to kind of give it, give it a, new, a new life. And uh, it's been a very interesting process. And for me, it's been a great learning opportunity. And it's been fun working with you on on the project as well. And, um, you know, one of the core things that we did here is we had to obviously rebuild all those, all those videos. Um, and, and so when I, when I kind of dumped those videos on you, what, what were your impressions? You know, what were your thoughts on how to, um, how to treat those things, those assets? Oh, uh, number one, a lot of content. That's, that's the first thing I thought, okay, 80 video clips or, um, however many we ended up with, just kind of the organizational aspect of it, keeping, you know, creating a process so that I can do it as efficiently as possible, um, bringing this up to date. You know, the source material was as it was, and we're just going to do the best we can with it. So, you know, I thought to myself, okay, what's the, what would be the easiest way? Um, definitely replace the titles. Um, so I would, I, went through cut away all the titles um like all 80 kind of a batch thing and then replace the titles did that correctly then the next major step was uh, finding music that's appropriate um the music that was there before it didn't lend itself to repetitive um viewings so i felt you know being able to come up with something that was that had some energy it had some life and it was but it didn't necessarily with it's interesting with martial arts oriented music it, it can in some ways if it's too melodic it takes away from the action on screen hmm. and you know some the melody is really in the movement um so you want to have it supporting it and, and yet you know still within that kind of like modern but tribal warlike asian feel so i had a number of songs that i thought could work um you know at when i ran um, my jiu-jitsu academy during during those years i also made a variety of um uh, musical compositions and there were about 60 altogether um that i put together for i call it sound of the way music for martial arts so out of that those 60 i thought at least half would be appropriate. But really when I put it up sound against picture, it ended up being about a dozen, a dozen different tracks. And sometimes I went back to like some of the earlier mixes of those tracks because 
the opening was a little bit better. It had a, it, it felt a little bit better in there. So, um, and along the way, I ended up uh, composing two new songs, uh, one called Tohei's Journey and another called Joining Forces that, that are featured, uh, one in the trailer and then in another, um, is also in the introductory module and then used elsewhere on the course. Uh, so it was, it was really a great opportunity to be able to get excited about a project, use this media that I've, I've already developed, create a new media and enhance it uh, to look as classic and timeless as possible. Uh, for a final step, I ended up, I didn't do any kind of like visual filters um, on the, on the footage, but I did end up exporting it at double the resolution. So I would do it at uh, 3840. Um, and by doubling the resolution, it really does help when it makes it look more sharp when played on a small screen. Um, and I've done that before with uh, some of my material on Amazon. Um, you do it uh, at normal HD resolution, but then if you double it, um, it looks significantly better on a 4K uh, television set. So I did the best I could to enhance it visually. And it took a while to be able to place the right music to match the visual. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with the overall process. And uh, oh, and then, of course, the last step, which was the voiceovers. Um, and that was that had to be accomplished in several um, marathon sessions. But <laughs> <laughs> it was a I lot to, of work, we right? know it was a push it was a push you know and I, I wanted each one to really sing and um you know the microphone placement being able to say all the japanese names correctly um just having it sound pro and having that dialed in and it was a process of you know placing the microphone flipping in between programs and making i was a, a sound designer, audio engineer for years. And this really felt like some of that true post-production work that I used to do. So it was, it was great to be able to flex that, that muscle that I hadn't used in that way for a long time and, um, and do something that I feel is very, very classy and uh, really honors uh, that pioneer um, yeah. in the Aikido community. It's, it's very artfully done. And I think it really, kind of brings out the potential of the you know, that historical video footage and um each each video there you know they range from whatever 30 seconds up to maybe three minutes is the is the longest longest segment but each one of them whether or not you look at it as an instructional piece it's it's beautiful it's artfully done and it's 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 just great to watch and i know you know the the one piece that you did kind of the the trailer with no voiceover and the mm -hmm. joining forces song that you'd written. I showed that to a couple people, um, as we've been going through the production process just to get feedback and like three people almost cried when they saw it. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> I, I don't know if it was the, you know, it's the, the, the impact of the music, the editing, but it really, it really comes together well. Um, so I think you, you did a fantastic job with, with that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and dude, thanks for the opportunity to work, to work on that. I mean, really it's a dream come true in many ways from being a, you know, a young martial artist who wished he could contribute to the Aikido community, um, in a significant way to now working with Aikido journal and, and being able to do something that, um, that preserves this for future generations. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so then when all the video was done, we, we also had to figure out the right form factor for, for packaging everything together and presenting the content. And so, um, we, we found and, a good, and that was, yeah, I mean, and, and tell me, tell me about that process of, because there's informational material with, with every video. And then you also, um, were in contact with, um, people that had done significant research on Tohei or have known Tohei. Yeah, that's right. So when, when we looked at this, we ended up with somewhere between you know, 70 to 80 video clips. And I just felt it was important to be able to present those in such a way 
that's modular so people can kind of go through it in a non-linear way. You can pick and choose what you want to see. It's easy to flip between modules and it's easy to search um, mm-hmm. for what you're looking for and easy to go through and kind of discover things in, in interesting ways. And with each of those modules, we've we've paired either a short story or some kind of an important um, fact or just an interesting trivia um, you know, trivia nugget that that goes along with each each video, and it was it was really fun putting it together. It was a lot of content, but um, yeah, we we drew from the Aikido Journal archives for information, and then a number of people that have had firsthand experience with Tohei Sensei, and um, people like Christopher Lee, who's just a you know he's a, a noted historian in the in the Aikido space. So it's. Um, it was really fun putting this together, but it certainly was a lot of work. Uh, but it also, when I go through it now, it's something where I, I find that navigating through the course, it's a fun way and an engaging way to to learn about this important figure, right, in, in the history of Aikido. And there are, you know, you can go onto Aikido Journal and you can read through the the interviews with Tohei Sensei and other articles and stuff, but those are pretty, they're pretty long and, and not everybody, um, you know, we'll sit down and read through those entire things, but to be able to kind of digest some of these key facts as bite-sized nuggets that, you know, accompany a, a, you know, like a nice, short, beautiful video, I think it's, um, it works, it works pretty well. It, it is. And you can kind of tease it out, play it out. You can watch a couple of modules and then just like set it aside or you, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be a gluttonous meal of ki aikido just right. by sitting down <laughs> but but so often with any kind of instructional it's like okay well they had to make a two-hour thing to get my money's worth so now i'm gonna you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be that way and i think that was a really a, a very cool thing that stan did by by breaking it up like that um it gives a lot of individual flavor to to each technique so it's not just a continuous stream um, but you can really kind of break it down, you know, what he's doing. Yes. So, and there are some interesting it, stories too that we, you know, that, that we were able to to integrate into the into the course as well. Oh yeah, yes, definitely. And there's, there's a fun, uh, I don't know how funny it is, but there there's one where Tohei was talking about he was throwing uh, Tamura Sensei. And and I guess he he threw him through a plate glass window or something like that. What? And yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was kind of interesting. And Tohei he kind of recounts the the story of how he how he threw him through the plate glass window, and you know he he told Tamura Sensei, "I'm going to throw you really hard and be ready." And yeah, apparently he you know he wasn't ready enough or something, and um, he ended up getting cut and injured, and, and then Tohei ended up scolding him, and uh, and then he said he felt really bad for for scolding him, and he. Uh, you know, he took him out drinking later, later that night, or something like that. Oh, that sounds very really uh, Japanese. That sounds very really Japanese, Japanese, yes. So anyway, there's, you know, there's so many, so many interesting um, that, stories. That. that yes, oh, or when I was doing the introductory module, you know, the fact that he announced his resignation during a dinner party for the doshu was pretty gangster. It yes. seemed. It seemed pretty. I'm going my own way, and um, it, it's cool. I mean, it's not just a style. It's a man who, and I didn't actually know that he had been um, uh, exposed to. Um, is it Nakamura who? Yes, who is considered the father of modern uh, yoga in Japan? Yes, yeah, Tempo Nakamura Sensei. That's right, Tempo Nakamura. Yes, yeah really dude it's it's it was illuminating for me to see what his influences were and and if i can gush a little bit about his movement you know when i started learning martial arts it was much more about oh if they do this i'll do that you know it was kind of technique oriented having an answer you know yeah. what techniques work and then later it became watching people move and you know, the efficiency of their movement, not just how, you know, not just how dynamic, but, 
you know, uh, more subtle things. And watching him illustrate these principles, for example, like taking out the slack and then moving. It's a simple idea, but to actually have the sensitivity to know when that is creating a little bit of tension, light tension through their connection, whether that's a grip or whatever. And then also to have the, you know, the kind of the one pointed centerness uh, in his hara to be able to just gradually extend them while still in balance, stuff like that. So you extend them, then you do your technique. And that is something that, for example, I was just showing in BJJ, you know, somebody grips your knees, there's a way you can break their grip. But if you give them too much slack, it takes a tremendous amount of power. But if you just move your hips back a little bit, it kind of extends their arms just an inch or two. Hmm. And then and then the break is so much easier. It's almost effortless, right? But you got to be in that, that, that zone, that zone. And he could do that you can see that um but you know it goes by so quickly that um a lot of people can't pick up on that invisible jujitsu or those really subtle body dynamics yes he was also um pretty skilled with the with the joe there's a couple of videos in there where he's he's doing some joe work and and i was um surprised to see his proficiency yeah yeah he was impressive and you know, Morihei Ueshiba had that kind of like true fluidity with the Joe where it just felt like he wasn't doing a cut. It was just kind of like emerging out of him. And I sensed that same thing in Tohei where it was, it, it was just as the energy was moving him, he was extending through. And um, yeah, that, that was impressive. Totally. Yeah. So it's been a fun project to work on so far. It's not, it's not done yet, but I, uh, it's getting close. And um, I feel like we've learned a lot along the way. And I'm, I'm pretty proud of uh, the end result. So I'll be, I'll be excited to share it with the community and, and, and get feedback and see what people think. Yeah, I hope, I hope they like it. Um, I hope there's good feedback. And I hope they can glean as much from it as I did. Um, because I, I think it was definitely something that... Um, you know, especially as an aging athlete, um, I'm, I'm much more into those soft dynamics that are effective. And um, yeah, I'm curious to see how the Aikido re, uh, community responds to the reissuing of a classic course like that. Indeed, indeed. And so in addition to that, we've got uh, some stuff going on with uh, Bruce Bookman Sensei as well. We have uh, an online course that we'll be doing with him that'll be released later in the year, probably probably in the fall, um, mm -hmm. kind of in the initial planning stages of that. Um, and then we have a an instructor seminar with him down in Southern California on Memorial Day weekend. Um, and you're going to be there for that as well to, to film the event and also to brainstorm and, and begin shooting for the, the online course. I think it's going to be great supplemental material um, to, to have for the course. And I think there's definitely going to be some, some gems revealed. Um, and I'm excited to, to record uh, Sensei Bookman again. He's really a fantastic martial artist and um and to be able to be to be able to support him like that and kind of get his his interpretation of aikido and his extensions his, you know all that cross training let's reap the benefit of that um and so i'm curious to to see what he presents and uh, i'm excited about it yeah me too and he's uh, he'll be bringing down one of his senior students from seattle jonathan who's uh fourth don and he has quite a bit of striking experience from uh he's got a, a strong karate background mm. and so mm. it'll you know he'll be able to really show you know show show some stuff against some you know some real strikes with some speed and power behind him good good we need more of that <laughs> yeah so that that'll be great and the you know the group that's coming together um to participate in the instructor seminar it, it's it's pretty fantastic. We've got a few sixth dons, a few fifth dons, a lot of fourth dons. People are coming from Canada. They're coming from the East Coast. They're they're coming locally from the Southern California area as well. 
So I think it's going to be a great opportunity to to get you know people together and not only train together but but make new friends um, and build strategic alliances and, and networks that kind of cross organizational boundaries uh, and geographic boundaries. I couldn't agree more, and I think that kind of like cross pollination among high level people, um, you know really skilled seasoned instructors skilled practitioners uh i think that's a really nice network uh, with an elite skill set to be able to tap into and um yeah it, it should be I, I really like the bulletproof and pins crew uh that came in for that very progressive very open-minded um great martial artists and i think um with Bruce Bookman, there's, there's going to be some amazing things presented and for the right, for the right audience, um, it's going to be priceless. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. So any other, um, any other things that you wanted to chat about while, while we're here? Um, I am just happy that the Kuichi uh, project is, I think it came together really nicely, you know, and, Huge thanks to you for organizing, spearheading, and um, and always keeping on top of that project. Um, I hope it's well received by the public. I'm taking off to Kuwait tomorrow, so I'll be out there, see my friend Ahmed Al Huli, and um, help prepare some of his guys for a competition in the Middle East. Um, that should be good. Um, it's always nice to to travel and connect with new friends and old friends and, you know, cross those cultural boundaries like martial arts can do in a very, very unique way. Sport can do it, but I feel like the martial bond is, um, is even a little bit more cohesive and tight. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. I look forward to, to, um, having that adventure and then coming back and, um, getting back to work. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And anybody that wants to find out more about you can go to roydean.tv. Is that right? That would be best. Yeah. That'd be best. And um, yeah, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on the podcast, Josh. I think there's going to be a a lot of of great great conversations uh, on this podcast going forward. Yeah, great to have you. And um, for those interested in checking out the new key Aikido course. It's going to release on Friday, April 6th, and it's available now for pre-order. Thank you for listening to the Aikido Journal podcast. If you find our work valuable, there are many ways you can support it. You can share it on social media, join the discussion on our blog, or you can support us directly by subscribing to Aikido Journal TV, a membership that gives you on-demand access to our video library, new digital gift boxes each month, and other perks. Then there's the Aikido Journal Academy, which produces special events and online courses. All these things and more you'll find on our website at aikidojournal.com. And again, thank you for your support. It's an honor to serve the Aikido community.